Welcome to the Online Super Coach Podcast. Today we are super excited. We have an I have another fellow New York native here. Uh, she owns her own fitness studio in Brooklyn, and she launched her online nutritional coaching program. And uh, recently, she's gone through our online super coach program. So I'm really, really super excited to have Dawn Pascarella here with us today. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. So I always like to start off on these podcasts with uh, asking everybody uh, if there's like a phrase or a quote that, you know, that, that you live by or speaks to you. So if you have one to share with us. Um. So the one that is that's simple and short, but that speaks to me is just that fitness is not a fad, but rather it is a lifestyle. And I know it sounds very cliche, but honestly, that's the way that I live my life. I've been in this lifestyle for like, I don't know, 15 years now, and there's no end in sight for me. So yeah. this is included in my daily life. This is something I live, eat and breathe. So that's um, exactly right. That's because it's it getting away from the fads. Like you have to figure out what type of fitness works for you that you could keep doing on a regular basis. Like what kind of diet is like some of those diets out there are just not sustainable. Like maybe they're good for like a couple of weeks or a month or so, but it's not sustainable that you could do all the time. So I totally prescribe to that. Like fitness is a lifestyle. You have to make it part of your culture. hundred percent, hundred percent. All right, great. So tell us a little bit more, tell the audience a little bit more about yourself. So how did you like get started in fitness? What made you uh, want to make a career out of it? Um, so I originally got my master's degree in uh, school counseling. So I was going to be a counselor. Um, but I'm not like, I use a lot of what I learned in school though with my, with yeah. my, uh, my uh, career now. So not, it didn't go to waste. Um but I got into fitness more of out of, out of necessity because when I was younger, I was always the chubby kid. I was always the one out of shape. And I kind of had in my mind when I was in my teen years that if I didn't get myself in gear and I didn't change my life, then I would continue to be an unhealthy and obese adult. Um, luckily I caught it when I was in my twenties and I went, you know, I lost a lot of weight and I just got into this lifestyle and fell in love with it. Not just about the diet or the weight loss, but just about the whole community aspect of right. it, going to the gym, seeing other people learning about nutrition. And it really sparked my interest. So I was into, it, it was a huge hobby of mine when I was in grad school and I was in college. It was my outlet. Whenever I got out of class, I would run to the gym or I would try to you know, do something that was more active. And then um, while I was waiting to get in a job as a, as a therapist, um, I decided to try personal training and then it kind of snowballs from there. I fell in love with it. I decided to open my own place. Um, I learned it, and then it just kept snowballing and snowballing. And I was like, well, I'm not going to go back into, you know, my career path. Although, like I said, I do utilize both I utilize what I've learned in school to be, you know, as being a counselor and working with people. Um, so it really, it like took my like loves of, of working with people and doing one-on-one -on -one therapy and also of, you know, fitness and kind of, you know, married the two. Yeah. So yeah. that's the oh, that's... answer, but that was, that was. Oh, no, that's exactly right. That's, that's, I think that's uh, very, very uh, relatable. And um it's just so fulfilling. And then, and then it is, you just feel like more fulfilling that you're able to like use that, the counseling still, like basically as a trainer, you're a counselor anyway. <laughs> so, so you are just basically doing it and it's just very fulfilling doing it in the fitness industry, really. Right. Um, so what type of studio do you have? I mean, obviously it's in Brooklyn, but uh, what, what, like, can you explain, is it more of like CrossFit type style? I mean, which is, I don't know. So it's a one-on-one -on -one studio. So it's not, I wouldn't say that there's any one style. It's really what I think. I mean, I'm the, the main trainer there. So it's really whatever I think. I'm equipped to do obviously a lot of weight training. I'm, I'm a very big believer of weight training, um, in weight training rather. And um, so I have a range of things. I like functional training. I like weight training. I like cardio. I, small I like, groups. Yeah. You do like small groups too? So I don't. I have over time. Um, I'm sorry for the noise in the background. I should have closed the windows. Uh, uh, I have done small groups all like over quarantine and over different times of my 
you know, careers. I've been a trainer for like 12 or 13 years, something like 12 yeah. years. I would so I've definitely done small groups, but it's not something that I love. I love one-on-one. -on -one. I love mm -hmm. to be able to really get to know somebody and what they need and what their, um, you know, differences are and what their, pretty much what each person needs. So yeah. I, I believe after doing small groups and, you know, uh, large groups, the only one way that you're really going to get to know somebody and really, really, really one help on them is one-on-one -on -one and personalize to that yeah. person. So um, what type of people, like what's your dream client? Like who, who do you train in your studio? Like what's your ideal type of client look like? So my typical client is, I mean, I train 99% women. I just, yeah. just, I enjoy, I've always liked training women. I connect well with them. Um, and my typical client is maybe in like late 20s, 30s, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so because of that, I was training that age group. So I, age group, I also realized I started training a lot of pregnant women. Um, so I got certified in that. Not because that was what I wanted to go into originally, but just this age group, thirty yeah, something. That's what that happened. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got certified in that, so I do train pregnant women, um, and mostly just women in their thirties. That's, um, yeah. that's what I what I tend to work with. That's what I enjoy working with. That that group. Yeah, well, that's obviously that's exactly what they say is that you know you are the the like that you. You, you that's where you are you you want to like kind of like train people who you resemble or you relate really well with so right. that's like really really perfect yeah, yeah exactly so why um so you have this great gig you love doing one-on-one -on -one personal training you have your own studio it's a nice little niche set up there why did you even decide to why would you even experiment or try to go into online coaching in the first place what was the motivation uh I mean, there was a couple of reasons. Um, a, I didn't always want to have to be physically present in my studio in order to make money, um, in order to even be able to do what I do and enjoy what I do. Because I right. do enjoy it a lot. I kind of wanted to be able to take that with me places. So I like to go on vacation. Um, and yeah, I could do some Zooms as far as like training, like working out. But it's not nearly what I would be, you know, how many yeah. people I would be home so i take a very large income hit obviously working for yourself you don't have sick days or anything like that yeah, exactly uh, so if i go on vacation i'm essentially almost at like a zero income for that week or two yeah. weeks or whatever so i wanted a way to make some income and keep doing what i'm doing and keep working while i'm not physically in my studio but also to reach people that so many girls would message me and be like oh i moved to jersey or i moved to michigan or colorado and i wish i could work with you if i was in brooklyn i would and now i could say well you can you know right. just because you're here doesn't mean that we can't work together i could write out your diet well you know i'll be accountable you know you'll be accountable to me for your nutrition i'll write out your workout plans we'll yeah. check in but you could still make good progress under my guidance and I work with girls now all over the country. That's great. That's amazing. That's so um, basically, you know, basically not having to be physically present allows you to get, create this passive income that's kind of flowing through. So now you can travel to different places all over now and, and you get that passive income coming in. And now you could also have a further reach to people who otherwise you, you maybe would have lost or you, or you can't uh, help them anymore. So now you could continue to maintain yeah. that. So that's, those are all super, super uh, uh, relatable uh, reasons right there. Um, so what mm -hmm. was what was the deciding, like, why did you decide, I mean, I'm grateful, but like, why did you decide to come on board with us at Online Super Coach? Like, what was, was there something that was like a deciding factor that like put you over the edge or just curious? Um, I had spoken to several other coaches before our programs. Um, it was a combination. Um, I actually... Your, somebody on your team found me um and I just something clicked I guess and I was just yeah. sort of ready um I was also going through a divorce so that was sort of like I needed a little bit of a change in my life I need something different um and I was motivated to you know continue to work on my business and to grow and to do more of what I love right right so it was Tyler I, I think right Tyler yeah. was it Tyler yeah yeah. yeah, he he went through the program in the past too. He was a graduate. <laughs> right. 
I follow him on social media as well. So I like to see other people's like progression. Yeah. He yeah. seems uh, also, you know, ran with the program and really done well. So that's great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he just, he found me. I had no idea, honestly, who he was. He was just, but something had me just keep on messaging him and finally create a, like a call with him. I don't remember why, but I don't know, maybe it was charisma. Who knows? It was just the time. <laughs> it was just the the time of my life that I feel like I needed a change. And I was like, you know what? I need to like do some, I need to do something different. Um, and I want to explore and I want to expand and I'd like to see, you know, what I can learn. Yeah. So. Yeah. And how did you find that experience? Like, uh, working with us? Like, uh, how was it? I loved it. I loved it. I loved, I was just saying how I liked my, my, my coach Hayden was great. Yeah. I have only to say about him. Like I said, he's a very pleasant person in general. So our calls were very, you know, enjoyable when they went very quickly. He explained everything well to me, anything I had, any questions I had for him, he answered. He always had like, he was gave me, like I said before, tasks that um, I needed to complete and it really refocused me and it really, I would have like a list of things. Like, okay, this week I got to get this done. Like, yes, I knew I had to get that done previously, but him, his accountability was yeah. really me to, you know, if I was kind of falling off and like, oh, I haven't really posted and I haven't really made a poll or anything like that. He's like, all right, don't we got to do this, this and this and this. And every single time I would do whatever he would ask me to do, I would get results from it and I would get more people reaching out to me and I was able to spread my word. You know, it's not like he was telling me how to be a nutrition coach. That part he yeah. obviously left. That's my expertise, but he helped me to be a better coach because I could reach more people and mm -hmm. I could, you know, just expand more. And, you know, that's really about, that's, that was the main thing. I was able to reach more people. That was a really big part of it, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome. That's really, really. I'm like, I love hearing those types of stories. Uh, Hayden gets compliments all the time. Um, was it? Well, how was it uh, compared to your expectations? Like, if you could think back, uh, you know, on the first day when you're first starting out uh, into the program, I was just curious. Like, like how, how was it? Pretty much what you expected. Was it different? Or you know, it was just how was it as far as what your expectations were? Um, I think it met my expectations, honestly. Yeah. Um, if anything, I didn't realize how much that like one on one accountability was was helpful yeah. um, and would really, you know, have developed that relationship with the coach that, you know, could help me so much. I, I don't know. I, I I wasn't sure what to expect, I guess, if yeah. it was generic or if it was if that was another thing. That was something that he exceeded my expectations. It wasn't generic. He was like even in the beginning when I had some like um roadblocks i guess um or i was having trouble doing certain videos or in certain ways he, he would sort of help me change it up so that it would suit my personality a little bit better sometimes yeah. i'd be like i don't really want to like this doesn't sit right with me this sounds weird or i'm not I'm, i don't want to come across as i'm being spammy or something like that because that's not my intention um and he was like yeah i totally understand what you're saying let's let's see how we could do it differently for you. So he was very good about modifying things for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and tailor it to something, you know, to my personality and what would make me feel more comfortable. Yeah. And it worked. It obviously worked. <laughs> right. So it wasn't, it was less of like cookie cutter. It was more of, okay, let's, let's figure out what we could do to make you more comfortable with this, this process, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we really, we really work on that a lot all the time as we try to uh, customize each person's program to be, you know, exactly fit for them. And, 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 and that's a perfect example of that. So that way, because right. um, you, because you can't put, everybody can't do the exact same thing. It, it's everybody's different strengths and weaknesses that even your clients, you know, are not going to be um, approached the same way, depending on what type of client you have. So it exactly. makes sense to just really have it more catered, just like personal training. <laughs> Everyone's in the same workout. Yeah. Oh. And absolutely. And also the fact that you guys were very flexible with me when I needed to extend, yeah. um, extended the program for me. Um, that was very, um, that was helpful. I thought that was, I appreciated that. And I feel like you, you know, there was no pressure for me to continue or not continue. Yeah. You guys were throughout the entire program and i i was appreciative of that honestly well i've never been uh you know 
sweeping the floor and then all of a sudden three o'clock hits, drop the broom and, and walk out type of guy. You know, I've always, you know, we wanted to see it through and, and we were in the middle of like so many different things we were working on and, you know, we got to just see it through. So make sure you, you finish up and do what we, you know, at least hit some of these goals. So um, what was, uh, so roughly speaking, like, how did you do? Like, like uh, what would we be willing to share with the audience as far as like a uh, performance lines? Like how, how how did you do it throughout the program? Do you have any idea of like the number of clients you've picked up or anything like that? Um, well, I could definitely say that within the first couple months, I made back my investment, which for me was I was very happy about. Yeah. Uh, anything else I made above that to me was obviously profit. And um I was skeptical at first. I was like, all right, it's a decent amount of money. Like, am I going to be able to make it back? And I did make it back with the strategies that was, it wasn't just like, I would have made that anyway. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I would have made that anyway, because that month that I started, um, my income went up a lot and um, I was able to make back what, you know, pretty much right away, what, what I invested in the program. So um, and then it continued. So, you know, my clients, my my remote or nutrition clients went up exponentially. Um, I'm obviously still using the strategies that were were taught to me by the by by Hayden. Um, and whereas before, I would have maybe like a, I, I was always consistent with personal training, always, always. Yeah. Um, coaching, I would have maybe two, three clients, you know, sometimes like it would, you know, go down only because I wasn't able to reach people. I didn't know how to reach people. I wasn't even yeah. getting there that I was doing online coaching. People didn't even know until I really started putting it out there. Um, so now I consistently have um, like up to maybe 10 clients. Oh, wow. Active each month. Um, you know, so even if I'm, if it's, like ebbing and flowing, it's still not ever at zero anymore. Yeah. So, plus you're still running your one-on-one -on -one studio to the full tilt. Yes. Yeah. So that's great. That's fantastic. So it's giving you a little bit more supplemental, uh, supplemental income right there. What was the biggest takeaway from the program? Like, what did you feel like you've learned the most, or was there like an aha moment throughout the whole thing? Oh, there were a lot of aha moments. Um, <laughs> but just. I think that um, even helping me to change the way I, I interact with people, because people message me all the time for nutrition questions. I'm extremely responsive to people. I will always answer a DM, always, always. Yeah, yeah. I don't know you, um, but I think that I was before maybe just leaving it at that and not really digging and not really asking. And I'm still not pushy. I will never be pushy. It's just not my yeah. personality. But I was never like asking, like if somebody asked me a question about nutrition, you know, it didn't really like, like dawn on me to say like, oh, well, maybe this person really needs my help. You know, maybe they're just asking me one question, but that's like the little tip of the iceberg. You know, you should really ask more, you know, and again, still not being pushy because I don't think that's, you know, not the goal, you know, but you kind of want to get it out of people a little bit. Like, do you need my help? Like, yeah. how can I? So I, that's what I started. That was a big thing for me was really like when people ask me a question about a food or, you know, nutrition or whatever it is, um, instead of me just leaving it at that and answering their question, it's like, let me figure out a little bit more. Let me get to know you a little bit more. Um, also getting on the phone with people, you know, before I would explain what I do on nutri with nutrition coaching um, through the DM, right. um, that's not so effective because you're not really explaining to people what you're doing you're not really connecting with them as as a person you're talking through an instagram dm yeah. so a lot gets lost in translation so digging a little bit deeper into what people need from me and why they reached out mm -hmm. and also getting them on the phone um yeah. so you're pushing them your cta is like to get them onto the phone basically and so many people are like well what do you charge for that consult and i'm like no like this is just, I'm not trying to get money out of you right now. I just want to know, is this a good fit for you? And people really appreciate that. I'm like, yeah. let's, let's just get on the phone. Maybe this won't be a good fit for you. You know, maybe it's not something you commit to or whatever. Right. Um, and then we, you know, then that's it. You know, it was yeah. just, it was for a time. So I'm not 
trying to like, let me nickel and dime you, you know? And I think that's helpful for people because then when you get on the phone with people, they really tell you what they need and like what their issues are and how, and I could see how I could help them. And that yeah. creates a, which is nice. So that these, these little things have really been helpful for me. So, so basically Dawn, now does it dawn on you that to like, you know, the, with, 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 with the messaging of the people and to really re interact with them that way? Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's a big part of it. Yeah. So following up on the leads that you're getting. So, so essentially the post you, you, you were doing, you were, or you're getting some good engagement and now you just, uh, we're just interacting with them in a, in a way that's not very, uh, salesy or aggressive you just essentially ask them some questions seeing if it's going to be a good fit for them and right. then you get them on the phone call and and if it works it's 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 obviously working <laughs> so exactly and then if they and a lot of times you know they'll say look i'm not ready right now and that's fine and then maybe in a month from now they'll reach out and be like you know what like what you said to me really resonated with me so you know yeah. clients that some clients, you know, have me in their minds and come back. That's happened a couple of times recently where they came back and they said, okay, let's, I really want to make this work. Like what you said to me really resonated with me. Yeah. And I think when you think about what you do, that also, you know, like it, it's it, that people pick up on that, you know, when, when you Why did they, to what caused them to come back to you? Um, like, was it some of like, they just keep watching your posts kind of, and you know. Maybe, or may I think I, from what they, these two girls that I have in mind, what they said was just things that we spoke about that resonated with them that yeah. kept mind. Plus, you know, I stay on, you know, I'm on my social media. So I'm like, they're always reminded of me and what I do. Yeah. And they, I live this lifestyle, not just, you know, BSing them, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. So getting on the phone and making an actual connection with somebody really does help a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, like what strategies are you employing now? Like what's, what, what social media platforms do you primarily you know, use? Where, where are you getting most of your clients from? Uh, you know, is it all strictly just organic posts? I was just curious. So definitely organic posts. Um, I do mostly Instagram. I, I share my Insta to my Facebook, but, yeah. um, and I know I could even expand even more on Facebook to be very honest with you. I know there's a lot of money to be made on Facebook that I'm not, you know, that I haven't yeah. uh, even there yet, but um, I do mostly Instagram. I started doing a TikTok because of Hayden. He's, he suggested that I try um, even just starting to put the, the videos that I've already posted from my Instagram to my TikTok um, to transfer them over just to get like a new audience. Cause I said to him, like, I want to start to get a new, you know, group of people, like a new audience pretty much yeah, uh, that aren't already familiar with me. So he, he had me open up a TikTok. So I realized I started getting new, new followers. And when I look to see like who the follower is, like, do we have people in common Re recently? We have not had people in common, which means that they're likely finding me, on TikTok or something like right, that. Right. Um, I put my link to my Instagram on my TikTok. So I'm starting to find, get new followers like that. Um, a lot of it is obviously organic. I don't, I, I don't pay for ads or anything like that. Um, just, I think my, like I said, my presence on social media, um, being what I've done with other people and how I've worked with other people and how I've gotten results from other people helps a lot. Um, and then again, just me sharing my knowledge and when people message me i'm very warm i'm not you know yeah. office i'm not like well you don't pay me don't don't ask me a question i'm never yeah, like yeah. that i'll answer somebody's i mean maybe to my detriment i don't know but i answer somebody's <laughs> questions and eventually they end up working with me yeah. you know like following you for a long time so i would say a lot of organic um but i'm using instagram and tiktok right now and I'm There's so much to unpack there. So first of all, you're doing exactly the right thing. What everyone uh, teaches and preaches about this stuff is you want to give away your information for free and charge for the implementation of your services. So right. that's exactly what you're doing. You're giving them, you're giving them, you're giving them information and you're creating leverage in the situation because you're giving them so much. And then sometimes people just feel like you give them so much value. They really want to sign up with you. Sometimes people feel guilty. They just want to sign up with you because you've given them so much. But, and, and then they also build confidence with the, with the client because 
you know, you obviously seem like a, an authority in this space. So that's like a huge point. So I think you're doing exactly the right thing. So don't be doubtful of that's, I think that's great. Like you're hundred percent. Right. And then, um, as far as the posts go, so you're essentially doing all of this from organic. There's nothing, you're not even using any money to pay the ads to drive traffic towards your site. You're doing it all for free with just, just using your own, just your, just putting yourself out there on social media, which is like absolutely amazing. Um, do you have any idea like what your best post was or most successful, like as far as, uh, I mean, do you have any, I'm not saying I didn't prep you for this. I just asking like, if you, if you remember uh, if there was any post that really resonated uh, like the pretty, really well. Um, honestly, the post where I spoke to the camera, Oh, that was something else that the, that I got out of this. I never spoke on camera. I was like terrified. Um, yeah. I was so nervous to talk on camera. I did not want to. And it gave me such anxiety <laughs> when I was told that I had to do it for like a week. But you know what? It broke the ice. It got me to do it. It's seven day video series. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, oh, I want to kill myself right now. But you know what? I did it. And I was after that, I'm like, oh, you know what? This isn't so bad. And yeah. people really liked it and they liked listening to me talk and hearing me talk about certain topics and they asked me for more um so i continued doing that even past the point that i was like you know forced to kind of yeah, yeah. I was, okay i actually like this you know uh people could hear from me personally um it's not just like a post that they have to read and people like listening to somebody that they trust or you know yeah no like and trust yeah right exactly so definitely um the ones where I got myself out there on camera were did well, like that really resonated with people for sure. Yeah. Yeah. How do you come up with the ideas for like future posts? Like how do you, what's your process like? Um, I think about the general issues that my clients are having. Like some, sometimes the, I'll, I'll have a few clients with the same uh, issues that week or that month. And I'm like, you know yeah. what, let me just this because so many or what people ask me if i get a lot of questions about on dm about something i'm like you know, have an what? example um what i did a post on intermittent fasting i did a post on it was another one that was um about maybe binge eating or overeating right. or um messing oh i think some people like the one that I, where i said I, um about messing up over the weekend yeah uh, or, or if you're always if you're always starting over um, you don't have to be perfect. Like people want to hear these things because it's true. I'm not just saying what people want yeah. to hear. Like nobody in the fitness industry is perfect. Um, nobody is successful in this lifestyle is perfect and never has a cheat meal. Like everybody has um times where they have something that's not so nutritious or whatever. But the difference is that you pick yourself up and you move on and you know, yeah. you don't back on. And um perfection is just never going to be the goal and it's not attainable. So I said something along those lines um, and people are like, wow, I, I really needed to hear that. Like that makes me feel really good, you know? So that's really, so, really, really great. That are sim similar to that or about binge eating and people will message me and be like, wow, I needed to hear this. Thank you. So that's great. So you essentially just think about like the things that your, your, your clients have, like the problems that they have, the obstacles that they're facing and they're trying to overcome. And you just do a post kind of, speaking to exactly those those needs and that's why it's really resonating with your audience really so that's really really great and and and, the, and it's very effective for you just talking to them directly over everything else because it's it's the no like and trust is really kicking in so that's all all really good so what's next what's what's in store for the future for dawn <laughs> uh, what's next i just want to continue to build um, I want to reach more people with nutrition. Um, my one-on-ones are my constant. And I realized that over time, I just don't want to stop personal training yeah. completely. I know people that are successful 100% online. I love doing one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I like building relationships and connections. I like seeing people. I like doing that aspect of it. So I don't think I'll ever give that up, or at least in the foreseeable future. I don't know what the future will hold. Um but I would love to continue and I will continue to to um, build on what I've learned from, you know, the program for for get reaching more um, clients for nutrition. Um, and I just want to continue to reach people that I wouldn't have otherwise reached, honestly. Right. So I want a better I had a 
I wanted a better balance. My goal is to have a better balance between nutrition, um, online nutrition and online coaching and in person. And before it was not even whatsoever. And now I'm getting a little bit more of a balance. Yeah. Um, so I'd like that. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, it's been really a big pleasure having you here. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I, I Since our first conversation, I just, I'm not going to lie. I even said it to you, I think, on that first conversation. I forecasted us having this podcast because I it just did. knew you were going to do really well on it. You were just a business owner. You're an entrepreneur. You're a doer. You um, have a great personality. So I just I just knew that. I was just like fast forwarding. Like, this is going to be a, a, a slam dunk. So I'm really, really happy that it's like we, we were able to do this. Um, so I'm really just proud of you. And I'm really happy. And thank you for coming on the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me in the program and for being flexible with me and just for everything you guys have done. I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Well, thanks again. Good luck with everything. And our door is always open, of course. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely get that. Uh, when Hayden comes down to New York, we'll definitely all get together, you know? So. <laughs> guys. All right. Great. Thank you.